everybody. This is day 18 of Commit, 30 days of yoga. In today's practice, we are going to be working on endurance, so lots of movement. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video where we go over some tips for your practice. Begin standing at the head of your mat in mountain pose, hands off the body as you connect to your breath. We're going to start with a little warm-up flow. Inhale to upward salute. Exhale forward fold. Inhale half lift. Exhale fold. Inhale to upward salute. Exhale, hands to heart. Take a breath. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, upward salute. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Take a breath. One more time. Inhale, upward salute. Exhale, fold. To half lift. And fold. All the way up. Hands to heart. Take a breath. Release the arms. Let's inhale up. Exhale, sweep the arms as we lower to chair and back up. Four more times. And three. Engage the legs two more times. And last one. Inhale back up. We have chair twist pulses to the right five times. Four more. Three more. Two. Last one, arms up, chair twists to the left for five, four, three more, two, and one. Return to standing, release the arms, and adjust as necessary, taking a few breaths here. Next, we're gonna float the right foot to a warrior three pose. Get strong through the grounded leg. Keep the right leg extended as you reach your hands down to the mat. We're gonna go into Shiva squats now, five times. Tapping the right knee to the back of the left leg. And extend. Four more times. Three. Two, and one. Lower the foot down to a forward fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, fold. To upward salute. Hands to heart. Take a breath. Let's do that on the opposite side. Floating the left leg back to warrior three. Keeping the left leg extended, reach your hands down to the mat. To Shiva squats, left knee taps the back of the right leg five times. Four, three, Two. And last one. Lower the left foot. Halfway lift. And fold. Inhale to upward salute. Exhale, hands to heart. Take a few breaths. Release your arms down at your sides, not touching the body. 
Raise your right knee to a single leg mountain pose. Then step it back to crescent lunge, raising the arms up high. Let's do that four more times. To single leg mountain, knee up, crescent lunge. Three more times, single leg mountain, to crescent lunge. Two more times, single leg mountain, to crescent lunge. Last one, single leg mountain, to crescent lunge. Open up to warrior two. Chest is lifted, shoulder blades down and back. Sweep the right arm through a big circle forward across the front of the body five times. Four, three, two, and last one. To extended side angle. Reverse warrior. Straighten the front leg to triangle pose. Folding over that front leg to pyramid. Stepping back to downward facing dog. Raise the right leg up to three legged dog. Draw the knee down center for knee pulls five times. Four, three, two, and one. Lower the leg to down dog. Make your way to plank. We're gonna move through rotating planks, opening up to the right side, coming through plank, opening up to the left. Four more times on each side, opening up to the right, to the left, three more times, right, then left, two more times, right, Last time, right, and left. Return to plank, flow through chaturanga, upward facing dog. To downward facing dog. Gaze forward. Walk or hop to the front of your mat to a forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Take a breath. Arms at your sides, hands off the body. Raise the left knee in single leg mount. Step it back to crescent lunge, arms up, four more times. Single leg mountain, knee up, to crescent lunge. Three more, single leg mountain, to crescent lunge. Two more times, single leg mountain, to crescent lunge. And last time, single leg mountain, to crescent lunge. Open up to warrior two. Sweeping the left arm through big arm circles forward across the front of the body five times. Four, three, two more, and last one. To extended side angle. Reverse warrior. Straighten the front leg, coming to triangle pose.
fold over the front leg in pyramid pose. Step it back to downward facing dog. Raise the right leg to three-legged dog. Knee pulls down center five times. Four. Three. Two. And one. Lower the right leg to down dog. Hinge to plank to rotating planks opening up to the left. Coming through plank, opening up to the right. Four more times on each side. To the left and right. Three more times. Left and right. Two more to go, we've got this. Left side. right, one more time to the left, and to the right. Returning to plank, flow through chaturanga, upward facing dog, to downward facing dog. In down dog, we're going to reach the right hand to tap the left ankle then left hand to tap the right ankle four more times. Right cross tap, left cross tap. Three more times. Two more. And last set. Good, from down dog, walk your hands back to meet your feet in a forward fold. Inhale to a half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Taking a few deep breaths here to finish up. Let's talk about the differences between warrior one pose and crescent lunge. There's a lot of confusion sometimes about what the differences are, and I find there to be about three major differences that play an important role in differentiating these two poses. So let's start with a crescent lunge and line it up. So beginning at the front of your mat, we're gonna step our right foot back. And as we step it back, we're gonna step it back and out because we wanna keep those feet about hip distance apart. So again, we're not standing on a tightrope, we're standing on train tracks. So lots of stability in a crescent lunge. And so that's the first major difference between crescent lunge and warrior one pose. And you'll see why after. So once that foot is back, we're gonna keep that heel elevated. And we wanna actually bring the heel above the toes. That's the goal here. So bringing the heel above the toes keeping that back leg straight. And then this front knee here, we want that to line up over the ankle. So if you find you're like this, we need to walk the foot out a little bit further until we have the knee lined up directly over the ankle. If you're a little bit more flexible, your goal is going to be to bring that front leg or that front thigh parallel to the mat. Here, good. So just like in Warrior One, we're gonna aim to square the hips off to the front of the mat here. So really, really deep stretch throughout the whole body really here. Good. So once we're in this position, we're gonna raise our arms up overhead. If we want to, we can bring the hands together or you can just keep them apart. And we're gonna keep the back straight in crescent position. Obviously, it's up to you if you want to play around with it, if you want to go into a back bend, if you want to twist, anything that you want to do. But to line up a crescent lunge, heel over toes, knee over heel, back leg is straight, hips are squared off to the front, arms come up, we get long through the back, lifting the chest, nice and open. Good. 
Now for our warrior one, let's begin at the center of our mat here. So my heels are lined up with each other. I'm just gonna step to a wide stance. And for warrior one, we're actually gonna stay on that tightrope. So I'm gonna turn, in this case, my left toes to the front of the mat. My right foot is gonna turn to a 45 degree angle and my heel is going to stay grounded. So that's another difference. So difference number one between crescent lunge and warrior one that I find makes the biggest difference is that in warrior one we are lined up on a tightrope and not on train tracks like we are with crescent lunge. So there's a little bit more stability in a crescent lunge than there is in a warrior one. The second difference is that in a crescent lunge our back heel is raised and both toes are pointing forward towards the front of the mat. Whereas in Warrior One, only the front foot is pointing forward, our back foot is turned out to a 45 degree angle, and the heel remains grounded on the mat. So it makes it a lot more difficult in a Warrior One pose to square the hips off to the front of the mat. And a lot of people find that they have trouble throughout their back knee when they try to do that. So it's just a guide your hips don't have to be perfectly square to the front of the mat, but that's the goal. So that's the motion that we're doing, and that's where you're putting tension. So we're gonna bend through the front knee, just like we did in our crescent lunge. Again, for the more flexible yogis, your goal is gonna be to bring that thigh parallel to the mat. Again, just like in crescent lunge, and in any pose similar to this, we're gonna aim to line up that knee directly above the the ankle of the front foot. So if you find that you're coming past it, we're gonna draw it in. Now we're a little bit more likely because of the way we're positioned here in a warrior one to turn that knee in to try to balance the body for support. So in warrior one especially, really important to make sure that that front knee is lined up with the foot, pointing in the same direction and not turning in or coming too far out, but that's less likely. So in this case, with my left leg forward, I'm gonna, I can take my hands to my hips here for a little bit of guidance. I'm gonna take my left hand and I'm gonna draw my left hip back and I'm gonna push my right hip forward. Okay, and that's gonna help me square off. And that tension that I feel here, so tension on the right side and that draw back in the left side is what I'm gonna hold. So bending through that front knee, holding here, square the hips off to the front bring the arms up and we find a little bit of a back bend. That's the third difference. In warrior one, we want that slight bend in the back and it's actually when we do square off the hips, it, it becomes a natural progressive progression in the upper body that we do bend a little bit in the back as soon as we lift the chest because of the way that we're positioned. So difference number one, crescent lunge, we're on train tracks, not a tightrope. Warrior one, we're lining up the heels of the feet with each other. Okay, so second difference in crescent lunge, both toes are pointing forward and the back heel is lifted. And in warrior one, only the front foot points forward, the back foot is turned out to 45 degrees and the heel stays grounded. Crescent lunge, the back stays straight. Warrior one, we find a small back bend. Good. So in both cases, obviously we hold the pose for about five breaths or 30 seconds before we release. And these are all just tips, it's all just a guide. When we talk about squaring the hips off to the front of the mat in Warrior One, that's something that becomes really stressful for people, I think, because, because of that back leg and what's happening there. So that's something that comes over time, that elongation here. And it is, again, just a guide. So you find that movement, you use your hands to guide you there and know exactly what it feels like and then tighten up and hold. If you slack out a little bit, that's okay. Just keep your shoulders squared off to the front of the mat and your hips are gonna try to follow as much as possible.